So the Acceler trial was a uh, cardiovascular outcome trial of a CETP inhibitor known as evacetropib among patients with high risk of vascular disease. The trial uh, enrolled 12,092 patients with high-risk vascular disease defined as either having a recent acute coronary syndrome, uh, diabetes with coronary disease, or peripheral vascular or cerebrovascular disease, and then randomized them to receive evacetropib or placebo on top of standard of care uh, for uh, uh, secondary prevention of vascular disease. Patients needed to be at LDL targets or on maximum tolerated statin dose. Uh, the trial uh, was followed patients uh, for the primary endpoint of uh, death, cardiovascular death, myocardial infarction, uh, revascularization, stroke, or hospitalization for unstable angina. This is an event-driven trial. Uh, the trial reached 93% of the planned accrued endpoints uh, with an average uh, of 26 months of treatment when it was stopped based on a recommendation from the Data Safety Monitoring Committee based upon futility for the cardiovascular outcome. The hypothesis was that, that evacetropib would reduce cardiovascular events based upon phase two data showing a profound effect on increasing HDL cholesterol and a very substantial effect on reducing LDL cholesterol. In fact, in our phase three trial, we found that HDL cholesterol was increased by a relative 133% uh, in uh, patients receiving evacetropib, and LDL cholesterol was reduced by 37% compared with placebo. So the, the outcome of this trial, in fact, was counterintuitive. We would have expected those changes in, uh, in cholesterol values and lipoproteins, particularly the reduction in LDL, which is an established and well-respected biomarker, to have translated to a reduction in cardiovascular outcome. In fact, the cardiovascular events were exactly the same in the two treatment groups, both the composite endpoint as well as the individual components of the endpoint, despite these ostensibly uh, beneficial effects on, on lipids and lipid proteins. So despite the beneficial effects, as I said, on, cardiovascular, on, on lipids, this did not translate to reduction in cardiovascular events, which was a surprising finding. Uh, we had anticipated uh, that the rise in HDL, based upon uh, the genetics data and the uh, animal data for CETP inhibition, would uh, produce a functional HDL cholesterol. Uh, based on phase two studies, which showed increased efflux, cholesterol efflux with, with evacetropib, as well as in increases in pre-beta HDL, which are the, benefit, the most uh, thought to be the most beneficial form of HDL, that rise in HDL was expected to be functional. Moreover, the reduction in LDL cholesterol was expected to be uh, beneficial as well, yet there were no differences. There were no differences in any of the endpoints, there were no differences in any of the subgroups defined by baseline cholesterol, or whether or not patients were on statin therapy, or whether they were on high intensity or low, low intensity statin therapy. Well, this, this class of drugs is, is one of intense interest, and there's another uh, drug of similar uh, intensity under evaluation, and currently still under evaluation in trial. I think this raises serious questions and concerns regarding whether or not we'll ever see uh, the cardiovascular benefit from this mechanism of, uh, of modification of lipoproteins. Uh, we don't understand why the LDL cholesterol reduction and to some extent the HDL cholesterol increase did not translate to clinical benefit. We investigated in this current analysis that we presented at the European Society meeting here today whether or not the changes in LDL cholesterol reflected changes in the actual atherogenic lipoproteins, uh, a APOB, and in fact it did. The magnitude was somewhat less, but nevertheless APOB was reduced. Uh, we did, and, and we did not see any independent association between the magnitude of change in LDL or APOB and the uh, uh, effect, uh, and any effect on uh, ischemic outcome. So, this raises questions regarding whether or not this class of drugs, this mechanism of, of modifying lipoproteins, will ever confer clinical benefit. It also is a caution. Is a, it, it, it highlights the limitations of any surrogate endpoint. LDL cholesterol has been a well-established and well-respected endpoint that has served as the basis for uh, uh, regulatory approval of many different classes of drugs. Um, and yet, despite that, in this trial, a substantial reduction in LDL didn't confer clinical benefit. So it again highlights that even respected surrogate endpoints may be limited when we're looking at drugs of different mechanisms. 
There are many other uh, approaches toward uh, modification of lipids that still hold promise aside from this particular mechanism. And their approach is directed at HDL as well. The HDL hypothesis, that is, can you modify HDL and improve outcome, has yet to be proven. There are many drugs that have failed in that, in that regard. Uh, but there are other drugs that are currently including infusions of, of HDL or, or of APOA1 that, that hold promise. And so hopefully we'll see, you know, maybe perhaps that mechanism of HDL modification. And there are other drugs, of course, that are aimed at LDL reduction, the uh, most prominent of which, of course, is the PCSK9 inhibitors, which were approved on the basis of reduction in LDL. Uh, we await uh, in the next several months the large-scale cardiovascular outcome trials of those agents, which will validate whether or not that mechanism of reduction actually confers cardiovascular benefit as well.